So with a name like Danware, you, you might think I'm a founder of VMware. But uh, that's not the case. Um, I am a founder of Gemstone, though. And Norm and I have been together 17 years since we uh, got together at Gemstone in the early 1990s. And I'm really happy to be here. Had a, and, and Gemstone's happy to be here. We had a great uh, asada last night with uh, Mariano. Uh, it was an excellent job. I was very happy with the, uh, all the fine food and really good Malbec that we drank. It was a, an awesome night. I got a good uh, welcome from, a good Argentinian welcome, so thank you. We're going to be here for about half an hour in this presentation. Um, I'm just going to do an introduction for 10 minutes. But my main message to you is that we're excited to be promoting the small talk language. Uh, and so is VMware, since they acquired Gemstone. Uh, we, we're going to talk about that business and why it's important to us. And, and, and how it might relate to you and your interest in small talk. So, uh, Norm, why don't we start with uh, some of the top customers. If you look at this uh, graph, this is one reason we're excited. Uh, over the last uh, 20 years, we've built uh, large customer bases, including Telecom Argentina right here. We had an excellent visit yesterday with the CIO of Telecom Argentina and uh, had a, a good meeting. They're proceeding with a major small talk 64-bit implementation. And uh, that's very exciting for us and for them. And they're going to be looking at object technologies in a number of other areas in other applications, uh, in, in both Smalltalk and Java. Uh, and we also have a, a Java offering called Gemfire. So they're very excited about that. In the Smalltalk world, though, right here we have three of the largest shipping companies in the world. And those shipping companies control about 20% uh, of the world's shipping containers. That's a very major uh, vertical market segment for small talk. And that's running the entire shipping company. That runs the entire logistics of each of these companies are three or four billion dollars in size. And that runs the global logistics for all of their container movement. Uh, it's like it was given an award by the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. as a, kind of the FedEx of the shipping business. And that uses Smalltalk 64-bit uh, as its core platform. We have Siemens and Telecom Argentina. I mentioned that. Siemens in, uh, in Vienna, a very large company is the name you might reckon, recommend, uh, recall or recognize. And they are doing a number of applications in the telecommunications business, provisioning, customer call center, uh, all kinds of telecom uh, provisioning applications. And here you see uh, some large financial institutions. This one here, the Intercontinental Exchange, is the largest electronic trading company in the United States for electronic commodities, for uh, Brent crude and oil. They took a lot of Enron's business. When Enron, I don't know if you remember that name, they had a problem. They took that business, and that's all on small talk, 64-bit. J.P. Morgan Chase runs the largest derivatives uh, business in the world. Uh, UBS runs, uh, and this is, out of, this is out of London, UBS runs the commodities in Switzerland runs all of these semi-precious gold, silver commodities trading, trading over a trillion dollars a day uh, on the small talk platform. And here we have manufacturing. Texas Instruments is a name you might recognize. Uh, they run uh, eight wafer fabs around the world. You're doing semiconductor uh, wafer fab. Uh, very mission critical. This system and these fabs uh, can't go down more than one hour a year. And every uh, minute it's down, if there's a production down, it's a $30,000 a minute in cost. So these are very uh, high profile, very critical, mission critical 724 application. Down here we have uh, utilities. Uh, fp and is a good one. That's Florida Power and Light, Miami. For those of you who have been to Miami, uh, they run all of the hurricane tracking for the state of Dade County in Miami. So whenever a hurricane 
uh, sees and picks up. This system here called Trouble Call Management System manages and monitors all hur hurricane activity, all down situations, and dispatches emergency crews uh, throughout the uh, tr troubled area. And those were giving a uh, high rating. We got the highest rating inside that big utility over Oracle and IBM for mission critical uh, reliability. And again, that's all small talk. And finally, uh, down here you have the government, which is always good because it, it, it uh, I think, legitimizes when the government gets involved heavily, you see a legitimization that usually they're pretty conservative, pretty safe, but in this case, Canadian government uses us for all of their border control and uh, passport uh, management. And the National Security Agency, this one's even uh, more interesting, it's, that signals intelligence uh, and uh, human intelligence applications in the National Security Agency. Helps look for bad guys really fast, uh, uh, monitors terrorist activity, and, uh, and they do it in you know, millisecond, microsecond speeds with the 64-bit uh, Smalltalk platform. So those are just a few examples. Uh, I guess the main message here is that this is a language that has longevity. It's a language that will coexist with Java and other open source languages. And it's here to stay. These firms are heavily invested. Uh, it, it's definitely a language that you can rely on for mission critical applications. I won't go through it again. Uh, usually we talk a little bit about uh, what they do, and I, I already covered some of that. So you see that um, we have a, a good representation in large accounts. When we were visiting yesterday with Telecom Argentina, uh, one of the messages for them was that they're in good company, <laughs> uh, that, that they can be confident that there are other firms just like them that have made this decision to proceed with 64-bit small talk for mission critical applications. Now, when VMware acquired Gemstone, there were some, go ahead, Norm, with that. Uh, oh, I'm, just the last one here. That was the shipping vertical uh, explanation for 20% of the world's shipping containers. And they're, they're now moving now to RFID and all of the, uh, they, they can manage their customs uh, port of entry changes faster than any other shipping company because they use small talk. So if you, you can imagine a big container ship going across the ocean and they hit a typhoon and they have to vector that ship to a new port, they can immediately stack and rack the containers off the ship faster than anyone else to re-vector those containers to another port. Th that type of thing is very critical and they do it in real time in 64-bit. So to my point here, kind of wrapping up before Norm gives the product uh, roadmap for small talk 64-bit, VMware uh, acquired Gemstone about it'll be two years in next June. And they acquired the technology. Uh, of course, all of the people stayed and the engineers and both small talk and Java. And what we see here is uh, they saw very strong synergies with the VMware uh, customers. They saw strong technology innovation. Um, they, they value the mission critical applications that we'd built. That's why they picked uh, Gemstone in their acquisition over Terracotta was one of the other choices in open source uh, distributed data management. And they continue to invest. Uh, that was very important for people that are looking to deploy applications as a it's not going away, it's actually being invested in. So you'll see a, I use the analogy that Gemstone was like a sailing ship and VMware is more like an aircraft carrier. So what we've done is we've onboarded this sail ship onto an aircraft carrier, which gives you a lot more stability, you know, particularly in rough seas. And uh, at Gemstone, we were very fast and very nimble and very responsive. The VMware is still allowing us to run that way inside the aircraft carrier. So we still have that flexibility to uh, move quickly and be responsive. So um, I want to thank you for that. Uh, we'll take some questions at the end. Norm?
Okay, I'm going to talk about the uh, Gemstone product roadmap real briefly here. Um, hit on the different Gemstone S product lines we have up there starting with 32-bit, uh, which is still around. It's actually in production in Argentina, some of you may know. Um, 6.60 was recently released and some of the major enhancements there is a rudimentary multi-threaded garbage collection, nothing as sophisticated as in our 64 product, but it does get some of the I.O. operations parallelized. Should uh, really help some of the really larger gigabyte, terabyte databases out there. Um, automatic garbage collection of symbols. Um, before now, symbols kind of lived forever because they were considered uh, special kind of root objects and some people end up making a lot of symbols in their applications that they later regret. Um, you know, you don't really need pound one as a symbol in most apps, but when you're starting out, mistakes get made. And uh, this method to override committed login behavior, this is something uh, to do with performance and security. When you have um, user profile aging turned on, to know, for example, how often a user must change his password or when the last time he was that he changed his password. In order to make that work, we have to do a commit at each login for each user to know the last time they logged in. So we know how long it's been since they last logged in. For large systems that run, say, several hundred VMs using the same user login, which some people do for, say, like background processes and so on, and they all log in at the same time, this can create quite a bottleneck because you could have, say, three, four hundred VMs all trying to um, commit a transaction where you're saving your login time within the same, say, few hundred milliseconds. So our customers have said, well, you can turn that off for some of these user profiles because these are demons. We really don't care about those guys. So we added that feature for a customer. And another thing that's been asked for for quite a while is you can now back up and restore uh, to and from NFS drives um, in this version. We typically haven't allowed this just because we've seen so many bugs with NFS over the years. Um, that's gotten a lot better. We still don't allow extents or tran logs to be run on NFS, but uh, we figured backup and restore is reasonably safe. And, and to be fair, the NFS system in Unix has really come a long way um, in, in the last uh, decade or so. So it's much more reliable than it used to be. Uh, Gemstone 32 is going to be end of life probably sometime next year. Um, most of our major production customers have already moved over to Gemstone 64. And um, somebody says end of life, that can mean different things. So let me tell you what it means for us. It basically means that we're not going to do any new product sales for 32-bit. Uh, we're not going to do any major releases for it. And we're not going to accept maintenance renewals beyond the end of life period. Now, with all that said, we still have customers with maintenance commitments uh, out to 2015, and we'll, we will be honoring that. So we're not going to pull the carpet out from anybody. But it, what it means is we're going to try to start to wind this product down and move everybody to 64 just from a cost and engineering resources uh, point of view. So that's really it for 32-bit. The, for the the Gemstone 64 version 2 line, we're planning one last major release of this product, 2.4.5, which will be out in December. This is really a bug fix release and kind of a catch-all of uh, things that we haven't uh, fixed in the last a year and a half or so. Uh, most of our customers are still on Gemstone 64 version 2 something. Um, but we're hoping everybody moves to version 3 in the next year or so. And that's what I'm talking about next is our 3.0 product. Um, last time I was here, the release is coming up. This year, the release has happened. It happened on June 15th um, this past year. And um, there's some fairly major improvements and changes in this release, and I'm just going to touch on them briefly. Um, one of the major things is we uh, moved back to a native code design in the virtual machine. So Smalltalk methods are now compiled to native um, byte codes on the fly. Um, so any application that is fairly small talk, execution intensive, a lot of message sends, what have you, is going to see a fairly major improvement. We've seen anywhere between 25% to 100% improvement in uh, code execution speed, depending on how many primitives you're calling and, and a various number of factors. But it is substantial from all previous versions of Gemstone. 
Uh, foreign function interface, uh, I think there's been talks given about that before. That essentially allows you to call out to third-party uh, dynamic libraries without writing any C or C++ code. You can do all the code you need to talk to the DLLs now from Gemstone Smalltalk. And I uh, think that's a major win. We typically know how Smalltalkers detest writing in C code, so now you don't have to. Um, also, external password validation is something we added. Um, before this, your, to log into Gemstone, you had to use a Gemstone password that was stored encrypted in the database. Recognizing now that a lot of uh, enterprises have centralized single sign-on facilities where a user logs on with one password for all systems and is stored out in something like LDAP. So you can now do that with Gemstone 64 version 3. You can use your LDAP password to log in if it's enabled for user profile. And we use Open LDAP and Open SSL to go out and validate that login so that there's no uh, password anymore required to be stored in Gemstone. You can also use Unix validation if you just want to have uh, standard Unix password validation as your Gemstone login. Uh, we multi-threaded a lot of things in version 3 to uh, parallelize the repository-wide operations, the big one being garbage collection. You can imagine that a single threaded single VM could take quite a while to garbage collect a repository of something like three and a half billion objects, determining which ones are alive and which ones are dead. Um, so we've multi-threaded that. That can be dialed up and down how aggressive you want to make it, but there's um, orders of magnitude or two improvements here on um, the performance of these repository-wide operations on large databases. Um, something for the Seaside Glass community is we have now built-in Monticello support. Um, it used to be that with version 2, um, in, the first thing you have to do is load Monticello into Gemstone, and that could always be a challenge, and because you, you need that loaded before you could load anything else. Well, now the Monticello at least comes loaded for you, and you have some place to start where you can start loading uh, MCC packages. Exception handling has been a major rewrite in 3.0. We have gone to the ANSI exception framework, uh, natively implemented now. There were ANSI exceptions in version 2, although it wasn't native, it was kind of a layer on top of our exception, so there were some bugs with it. But it's now fully supported um, right down to the grassroots. And the old gemstone exceptions are still there. They're deprecated. Some of them work, some of them don't. But um, for those used to writing exceptions in ANSI, um, you know, the class-based exceptions, that's all here in gemstone 64 version 3, and it all works great. This is a, a test I ran about eight months ago um, comparing uh, commit throughput of, of version 3 and uh, version 2. Um, in terms of commits per second. This is a trivial test. These are very small updates on a uh, Solaris Spark 10 machine with uh, 16, 16 VMs, basically just committing flat out as fast as they can. I think it was an eight core machine. And we took disk I.O. out of the mix by uh, putting the tran logs on solid state disks and the extents on uh, raw devices. So we really tried to just get, you know, what is the apples to apples improvement here in commit performance. And you can see we've got a real nice improvement here. I think it's about four point something X. You know, we're in version two, we're here, I think around 17, 1800 commits a second, which is still not too bad, but up here we're approaching 8,000 in version three for the same test and the same hardware. So quite pleased with that. And uh, this graph shows more about the VM um, the small talk execution speed improvement with some indexing tests. Um, these are all tests to build, audit, and, and uh, remove indices on large collections of uh, two million elements. Turns out that is a fairly small talk intensive operation. Um, and the, the version three is in red, and the version two is in blue. And, and on this graph, the, the X is uh, time, so smaller is better. And this is an example of how your performance will vary. You know, the remove indexes, it got a little bit better. The audit indexes, it got a lot better. And the build indexes, performance is improved, is somewhere in the middle. This is typical of what you'll see with the, the version 3 speed up. OK, um, that's version 3. That's shipping today. That's available now. Um, version 3.01 is coming out very soon. And that's mainly just a bug fix release. 
of things we found since June. Um, you can expect that, I think, in about the next two weeks to come out for anyone that's uh, tracking that. Our next major release is 3.1. Um, in that, we have some fairly new features. We have something called hot standby database support. Um, this is what Oracle calls database clustering. The idea is you can have several databases out there in a uh, disaster recovery mode. Uh, staying in sync with the transactions being committed to the master database. So if you lose your machine or lose your data center or whatever, you can fail over to a hot standby database and come up very quickly. Um, currently with Gemstone, we have more of a warm standby solution where you have to restore tran logs to the database, but you could be 15, 20 minutes out of sync if, if the worst case happens and the, the main data center completely burns down. This will keep you much more current in staying in sync with the main database within a few seconds or even a single commit. So this is being designed right now, but we have committed this is going to be in version 3.1. Um, nested transactions is another change. Uh, the idea here is if you make a bunch of changes to uh, gemstone objects in your transaction, but you want to roll some of them back, but say not all of them, you can do that with a nested transaction now. So you can do multiple begin transactions and abort out, say, one level to roll back some of your changes, but not all of them. So there's, there's various applications where this can be quite handy. Uh, something else coming up is native support for SSL and TLS with our socket layer. Um, currently, we have a class in Gemstone called GS Socket. Uh, which supports all the normal socket operations to talk to a, a, a client over, over a socket, but we don't have SSL support. That's now coming with a new class called GS Secure Socket, which is a subclass. And this uses the open SSL, uh, open source framework uh, to do that. And you get all the you know, encryption, all the different uh, um, certificates, and all that, all that kind of stuff you get with open SSL, you get here. So, um, we know of at least one customer that has a, a glass application that I think they wanted to talk to PayPal. And the only way to do, to talk to PayPal is with a uh, secure socket, understandably so. And you can do that now, but it's a little bit difficult. We're going to provide native support for that in 3.1. Um, also some improvements to support SOX requirements for some of our corporate customers are, are um, since the Sarbanes-Oxley thing, they want audibility on everything. Who changed what when? What time did they log in? What time did they log out? What did they have for lunch? You name it. They want to know it. They want to be able to turn on those controls. So we're adding a bunch of support for that for better uh, tracking for security compliance um, with Sarbanes-Oxley. Time frame for this release is scheduled to be mid-June next year, 2012. Um, that's all I have. Are there any questions for either Dan or myself before I turn it over to James? Okay, thank you very much.